This is hands down the best costume we've ever had in any video ever. Today we are recreating the most iconic moments in Try Guys history. Try Guys has been around for approximately 10 years now. 10 years of making videos online where we try things. The internet culture just is culture at this point. In my wildest dreams, I never could have expected some dudes who put on women's underwear would turn into this. <laughs> I mean, it turned into a lot. Do you want to get naked on the internet one more time? I don't want to get naked on the internet one more time. But you're gonna. But I'm going to. <laughs> Welcome to the Try Guys 10 year anniversary special! Gay hunts, gay hunts. Have I not suffered enough? <laughs> what are we doing? Well, who is this for? This is our 10 year legacy, huh? Yeah. Can we even show this? Of course we can. We own the platform now. We're uncensored on second try. We are working today with an incredible stylist who is going to bring our most iconic Try Guys looks to life. I do feel like I'm dressed like someone's Tumblr fantasy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Our first video was in September 2014. So that means it's been pretty much 10 years. The first ever Try Guys video is trying on women's underwear, specifically Victoria's Secret underwear. Victoria's Secret is known for the fashion show they used to do where they make ladies into angels for some reason. I'm 10 years older. I'm wiser. I've made more mistakes. We're doing pants off. Well, well I'm, off. I'm sort of shirts off. You gotta pick your own thing, man. You know, we're almost 10 years old. We're starting this new chapter with secondtry.tv. It's made us reflect on this journey in a way that, that we haven't. This is Guys Try On Women's Underwear. Oh, this is technically the true callback. Anytime anybody tells me, like, what's the number one thing people should have before they go into a career in the internet, I say it's a strong sense of self. I'm Taylor Lorenz. I'm a technology and culture journalist. I write for the Washington Post. Hey, let's see. Keith. I guess we'll start with the harness. If you don't have a strong sense of self, the internet will just eat you alive. It looks really like horse wear. We'll get down on all fours. Well, because one thing, we didn't want to repeat, we didn't want to repeat the thing where it's like, oh, look, we're putting on women's underwear. This is like an elevated version where everyone feels comfortable. We all evolve as people too. That's the other thing. It's like, none of us are the people that we were 10 years ago on the internet. Who was I before the Try Guys? Uh, I moved to LA to perform. I used to tour with an improv group, and then I made my own improv group that also toured. I taught improv for a while. Is this clothing for women, or is that like a dated thing? I think it's dated, and I think a it's lot of- It's clothing for women? I have no idea who this clothing is for. <laughs> <laughs> I made a web series, edited sketches in an attempt to make viral videos. Honestly, this shirt's <laughs> kind of rad. Turn around. If I hadn't been a try guy, I probably would have continued trying to be an actor and comedian. Yeah, maybe it should just be like that. Maybe my dick should just be out. Maybe my balls should just be out. I was never super good at auditioning. I really wasn't hired or cast in a lot of things, like almost no commercials ever. Uh, no commercials ever, actually. <laughs> this goes around the neck. Oh, this is boobies. That's cool. Before the Try Guys, I would say I was a pretty insecure person. Wait, which side is, which side is my boobies? I moved out to LA with these hopes and dreams of writing and directing and the years in, I was not doing that. I was making stuff that I hated because it wasn't as good as I thought it should be. I wasn't chasing my dreams. I, I wasn't trying and I, and I was really afraid to fail. This is called Boys Figure Out Girl Clothes. This isn't even, I don't think it's anybody's clothes. What is this? <laughs> Maybe I can buckle you into me. <laughs> I made this web series and I held on to it for eight months because I thought that if I could just like edit a frame here or there, that maybe I could fix it into being not bad. <laughs> you look exactly like a certain type of gay guy at Pride. I know exactly what yes, you're talking about. Yes, they're like about. otters. They're yeah. wearing like a little tiny short. 
You just got it on for the record. I've upgraded to Otter. I say this all the time, but I was one of the last people anyone would have thought would ever be in an unscripted comedy digital group. Oh, these are cute. This is what they call um, boyfriend cut underwear. I think they're just, I think they're just men's underwear. So this is just men's underwear? <laughs> I was always the weird art kid buried in his own work who had very little social connection. My only issue is just like not really my vibe. It's a little too like athletic meets princess and I kind of want more of the... This feels like... A little spanky, you know what I mean? I wrote and directed short films, music videos, all while waiting tables to make ends meet. I was on the grind for over five years. So eventually I really needed a full-time job. I was either going the very traditional route or doing something rather unconventional. Ow! Whoa! Where? Ah! Guess who tucked? <laughs> Oh my God. It was exponentially explosive from going from, you know, little film school kid to millions of followers. It was relatively overnight. To have people back home being like, whoa, Keith, I saw you in this video. It just felt awesome. Did we have it or did I just opt out and we're not having the child? I never really thought about the permanence of the internet. This angle, did, why? Oh, oh. Don't worry, Zach, trust us. <laughs> Cause it's there forever, man. Yeah, the first videos we were pretty naked because we were wearing clothes that leave little to the imagination and that weren't designed for our bodies. But it was surreal because a million people is a lot of people. We tried on women's underwear. Uh, that's what blew us up. How does going viral affect you? Going viral is almost like winning the lottery. How would getting $10 million affect you? Some people, it's the best thing that ever happened to them. They use it to launch a business. Most people don't handle it very well and it's actually quite negative. They kind of experience all the downside of fame at once with almost none of the upsides. I was pretty mortified by it going viral. The point of that first video, even though it what, is two and a half minutes, it was meant to be something that people could share on social media to then start a conversation. I do think the garter's nice. I think I actually look pretty hot. I don't know if this is something Becky would want to see me approach her in, but. Only one way to find out. I, there's something here. Really 2012 to 2014, you saw the rise of sort of viral feminism. This was like the male tears era. Ugh. I'm gonna knock you up like a little there you naughty go. girl. Naughty little thing. Oh yeah, naughty girl. You started to really see people on the internet use it to talk about body image and gender norms. Men doing something that women would have to do and it's like, and they can't do it, and it's crazy, and then they're like, oh my God, women do this every day, you know? <laughs> it resonated so much with women who felt this cathartic experience of seeing this part of my life is hard and seeing that recognized. This is funny. You know what, this is making your butt just kinda pop up. Oh yeah, you have to go right under his butt. Then. Yeah, you gotta really, I'm getting it now. It feels like now both sign of its times, it's slightly cringy in a lot of ways, and then also like the messaging felt like it was in a good place. I think that was like the optimistic era of the internet. I think BuzzFeed pioneered it. You look like you should be fisted. Thank yeah, you, you look so like you should much. be fisted. Yeah. Thank you so much. Pre-algorithmic feeds, the internet was so wholesome. About time. You know, you're friends yeah, no, with this, someone for 10 years. Yeah. You're going to hear those three magic words. You look like you should be fisted. This is a fisting should, outfit. Should it's, he, doesn't look like, he doesn't look like women's lingerie. He looks like Folsom Street Fair. The bar for men was quite low, I have to say. No, no <laughs> offense. <laughs> we, we benefited pretty severely from that low bar. Oh, this is what I want. Let's go right here. Are you talking, kidding me? This is gonna give me some hot ass titties. So we have here kind of a double-sided elastic band. And what I have to imagine is that it goes around <laughs> to you and then we just kind of walk together. <laughs> <laughs> reflecting upon even what we know and learned. Like we wouldn't just be like, we're gonna throw on women's underwear and have like a surface conversation about how this fabric feels soft. We're so past that conversation. Aw, I like yours. Whoa. I like the titty outline style. I want my nipples out. I don't feel sexy at all. No. I'm putting my sexy outfit back on. You put your sexy I outfit back on. I put my sexy on. outfit back on. Oh my oh God, God, let's get these it? wings on. It's time for wings and we're gonna become Victoria's Secret Angels, but also we're sort of like trying to elevate it, make it more fashion, make it more interesting. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's just so bright. Oh, it's so like sad. Just the final track. No. <laughs> wow, Keith. Yeah. Wow. It feels very secure. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready.
Seventy for Angel School, Dad. You look cute. This is giving me flashbacks to 2014. Yeah, is it? <laughs> yeah, because How? it's been a while for me. Well, for me personally, I do feel like I'm dressed like someone's Tumblr fancy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, there's definitely someone drew a manga of this. I thought he was so being hilarious. sexy. Yeah, that was rude. She Maybe it wasn't your ideal version of what I am right now. But someone out there, someone out there, just got a huge boner. I don't actually really know what makeup I'm getting. I'm the clitoris, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Today I am rediscovering that I am the clitoris. What a sentence. I'm not responsible for this moment going viral. Someone put this on Tumblr, I think, as like a four panel photo gift set, and it went viral on its own. You know, fun fact, the original line was, oh my God, I'm the Labia Majora, but it didn't have the same ring. It just didn't play. <laughs> when I first saw myself in videos, I, I hated it. <laughs> I hated my face, I hated my body, I hated my voice, I hated my hair and the way I dressed. I hated looking at myself. You know, the second video we did when we tried on Halloween costumes, the video was my idea, I produced it, I made it, and I tried everything in my power to edit myself out of the video. <laughs> I, to this day, I get tagged any outfit that is even lightly vaginal, I get tagged in a million times. I, uh, I brought oh. this, uh, a fan made this for me this years out. ago. I keep this on my desk. There's a, not to say that I don't love all the fan art equally, but this one's three dimensional. The teeth are really funny on that one. Yeah. Okay, let's slip off this nighty and get into something a little more comfortable. Zach is someone that I care about very deeply. I feel like Zach didn't realize that he had a lot of strengths where there were perceived weaknesses. Oh my God! Oh wow. <laughs> Look at me, I'm so pretty and glittery. Zach is a super nerd, always has been, always will be, but he's much more confident now. These are, these are pants. Holy cow. What are these pants supposed to be if not for vagina? He was probably the most insecure and edited around his own body in those early videos. Very smart, always been very, very funny, and always made really good stuff. Now, I think he's really, really confident, perhaps too confident at times. <laughs> oh, should someone, can someone crawl through my legs? Now presenting the miracle of life. Hello. <laughs> I'm here, look around at the world. I am a girl, a baby's girl. Thank you, thank you. Ultimately, content creators are users of the platform and we are all users of these platforms. The Halloween costume video comes out and I see comments. YouTube comment section, pretty notorious for being a, a, a despicable place. It was lovely. I had the nicest things said about me. People calling me cute. Ah, oh my God, little old me. I used to hate seeing my shoulders, but in this outfit, it feels right. I like it. Seeing nice comments really like changed the way I see myself. Not only were people not saying all of the nasty things that I set to myself in the mirror, in many cases, they were saying the opposite. I feel like in this outfit, I should walk down a grand stairway with my hand stroking the banister. I gained a ton of confidence over those first few years and it, the audience's acceptance of me taught me to love myself in a way that I wasn't ready to without them. So thanks. <laughs> I get to wear a little dunce cap. <laughs> oh my God. It's crazy that we considered other options for me. Like we had a whole brainstorm of what should my look be, and then we we're like, yeah, I guess maybe this, maybe this one works. In what world did we not do this? <laughs> yeah. Are we doing it? I can't see without my glasses, so I need big nods, yes, or big shakes, no. He took it upon himself to like run 
the business in a lot of ways. And I think that's something that I could never do. I think realizing that about himself and executing it flawlessly in a lot of ways is something that I will constantly applaud. Like, I think Zach's growth has been maybe the most obvious for the audience. He's accepted the parts of him that he can't change and he's changed the parts of him that he can. I think especially with his ankylosing spondylitis, he found that other people had this need and he found a need to like help other people or at least show that he struggles in ways that other people do so they can feel seen. And Zach has more, I think, to think about who he is and how he transmits that message than maybe I do. Fellas. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, uh, like? the effect is working. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I love this well, ruffle. Guess, I'm the clitoris. The ruffle. Well, you're the whole vagina, Zach. I'm the vagina. You're yeah. the vagina. Your face is the clitoris. But I love those pants. Thank you. You gotta really sell it. Okay. Because it's one thing selling a uh, cheap Halloween costume uh -huh. and making funny, cute jokes. No, we don't want to do that. It's another thing selling a couture garment. I'm couture. This you have is to kind serve. Of literally yeah. Do I have to serve? Don't do that. <laughs> but you gotta serve a tour. 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 I never identified well with traditional masculinity. I like being soft. <laughs> I think I'm very pretty. I've got delicate features. I'm proud of them, but I wasn't always. You know, the changes that the company has undergone over the last two years, it's shown me strength in myself that I didn't know was there. I've gone through the cocoon of Try Guys, of making these videos, and I am a happier, a more confident version of myself. I didn't need to be anything other than who I am. And for five easy installments of $39.99, you too can become a vagina. what happened online that made people so fascinated and interested with viral food. Food? I think it like runs the internet. It's just so universal. One of the first viral Snapchat channels was the Food Network channel, actually. Food is just this like universal thing that everyone can relate to and have an opinion on. Well, I'm being transformed into the king of fast food, but also I think it's an homage to Colonel Sanders. The least creepy of the creepy mascots. Cause you know, the Burger King, he's creepy. Ronald, creepy. Jack in the Box, creepy. Most of them are clowns. The Tasty videos, that was the era of Facebook video, right? We saw the BuzzFeed Tasty, we saw the like top down, kind of like hands. Fast moving hands, stretchy, stretchy cheese. cheese. Yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. And, and anonymous. Perfect looking avocado toast, you know, on the perfect plate. And it was this like highly curated almost aesthetic. Once it moved to video, like I think you saw a lot more kind of like more of the food reviewer. 2016, 2017 to like 2019 was like, we've made this person try all the hottest hot chips. I think like the internet has shaped food trends in a really interesting way too, where like viral food. Yeah, the whole eating, I mean, I love to eat, certainly. That's never been new. When I was 10, I remember my parents remarking at how much spaghetti I was eating. But then BuzzFeed like, a lot of those taste tests, uh, I was able to taste international foods and snacks and I learned that I really liked a lot of them and I just thought, let's just eat everything from McDonald's. Those have grown from being 20 minutes, very, very tightly edited with montages to as long as an hour, 20. It's really fun. I love that people love it so much. How am I not cast as Colonel Sanders? Maybe you'll get a call after this video. I hope so. It is apparently incredibly helpful to the eating disorder community. I've had hundreds, if not thousands of people over the years write to me or message me online and say that it has been really helpful in their journey. It certainly wasn't my intention, but it's a really wonderful use of something that I do purely for comedy. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, and turn around. Turn. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. Would you like fries with that? Oh, this looks really nice. You look really dapper. The bow, darling mm -hmm. love. The shoes, excellent. Yeah. Shoes are so amazing. Fancy. I feel like the entire combo meal. Dare I say you're serving <laughs> King? Uh, why, are you, why are you doing this like Habsburg smile? I don't know. <laughs> It just feels right. So dare I say this is the best you've ever looked in your life? Wow. I feel Thanks. royal, I feel good. I, does it feel like the fast food king? I think so. The Colonel Sanders under part looks really nice. Yeah. No, it, it feels very fast food king. Keith 
has always, I felt like, been a constant. I think Keith would even say so himself. He's a consummate entertainer. He just wants to be in front of people and to make them laugh. And I think that's a beautiful quality. One thing I know about Keith is that he's actually, <laughs> he's kind of a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> he has a, a crazy tongue and he can't handle most foods and that's kind of been his entire life. But he's also someone that from the friendship side and from the Asian side, I've really appreciated that he's grown so much in terms of his culinary appreciation. There's nothing like seeing a white man embrace spice even though they can't handle it. That is pure riz. <laughs> and Keith, if he doesn't have the cojones to go for, you know, jumping out of planes or, you know, physical pain. He subjects himself to it for food. And I think that's kind of a beautiful thing that he's been able to craft because it's not like easy to eat that much food. Keith has been pretty solid. <laughs> From the beginning, Keith has always been the hardest working person I know. Everyone knows that he's a great performer, and he is. You put a camera on him for 45 minutes, you're gonna get 45 minutes of enjoyable footage. That is not true for me. <laughs> but what I think people don't know about Keith is how hard he works. When we were at BuzzFeed, Eugene and I were trying to make four to six videos a month. Keith was making eight to 12. And I feel like he's just a guy with a good head on his shoulders. Like I, I like having him have, as an influence in my life. I think he's made me better as a performer. He's made our videos better. He's made me better as a person. I think it's about time that the world recognizes your excellence. And I'm glad that this photo shoot is celebrating you. If you think you've had more fast food than me, more variety, bring it. <laughs> There's just no way. And my, all mine's documented, so I can prove it. I am sort of the same person. I think I have been through more phases of stress. I've grown, I'm 10 years older. I've had a lot of successes. I've had a lot of failures. Uh, I've had crazy experiences. I mean, being a Try Guy is basically having a once in a lifetime experience every month. I've knocked things off of other people's bucket lists like crazy. <laughs> I never wanted to fly a plane, but I have. Actually, that's probably what makes the Try Guys special is that most shows only have people who really want to do something, try it. But we have people who don't necessarily want to do something, try it. And sometimes they find out that they love that. Sometimes they are reaffirmed that they didn't, but at least they did it. And trying is the best education you can get. The nuggets with sweet and sour sauce. When we think back a decade ago, the, our understanding of gender was incredibly binary. Tumblr is the first place that I saw people really sort oh, of yeah. pushing <laughs> forward. So with today with Gay Horse, um, it's kind of uh, twofold because it's both an homage to one of the first viral videos people really know us for, and especially me for, which was the uh, drag video. And the drag video was the first video I personally produced in the Try Guys. I'll be taking a photo in full drag, having borrowed a piece from Mayhem Miller, my drag mother, who of course I'd called in for the first Try Guys drag video. And I'm going to be the more polished, fabulous, final form of gay horse. There was this explosion of coming out videos, big YouTubers talking about being gay and talking about sort of the LGBTQ world and changing people's understanding of sexuality and normalizing. And I think it was because a lot of really brave LGBTQ creators dealt with an enormous amount of hate and backlash. And One thing I have seen personally, which is really beautiful, is that sort of like casual dismissal of these strict binaries that so many kids now moving into college are just like, oh yeah, I was exposed to that since I was a kid. I didn't need my parents to tell me it was wrong. Yeah. To treat that as yeah. a given is, that's awesome. Yeah, even for us, like we didn't grow up with that. Also just the concept of coming out. I mean, I was talking to another LGBTQ teenager recently for a story who was just like saying that that was so millennial and dated. And he was <laughs> like, why do I have to like tell my parents what gender I want to, you know, we have, you know. Coming and out is chuggy. Yeah. <laughs> well, chuggy, chuggy yeah. is chuggy. <laughs> yeah. So Gay Horse was, I like to joke, always a part of me. The beauty of sort of failing into something as shitty as what that plushie ended up looking like. And then many of the other Gay Horse iterations thereafter, they all were kind of like really messy, beautiful, queer fails. <laughs> so I think that's why people related to it. My drag mom, Mayhem Miller, she lent me some of her best drag. I'm very excited to put on a couple of her different options for Gay Horse. Uh, we were leaning more towards black and sleek and dark. I came into the digital space as someone who had 
a lot of personal issues, family secrets, aspects of my background that I was still contending with, and then was immediately thrust into the public eye where they demanded authenticity from me. And I had to craft using parts of my narrative that I knew I could connect with with strangers, whether it be my race or my sexuality or my gender identity, all of these things. That disconnect for me was extremely taxing because in the end, the hunger that the audience has digitally is that they want to know specifically more about you. I think the content creator industry's mainstream parasocial relationships, which is people feeling like essentially you're their personal friend. Instagram and YouTube in the 2010s, because they were so visual in nature and so interactive in nature, you just saw these deep parasocial bonds begin to become the norm. You can get a lot of joy from it too. Like when that person experiences success, you feel like you're part of it. The downsides, of course, is for the content creator themselves because there's no way that they can ever live up to the expectations of these parasocial bonds. And it's also just emotionally draining to keep up with. You are expected to respond and be responsive at a level that nobody can maintain. Many of those millions of people were extremely supportive and fulfilled and enriched my life in a lot of great ways. But it is very hard to be someone who really seriously, deeply cares about things like their identity and the art they put in the world. And I think it's 100% okay to just say, it's just not for me. I remember when I first met Eugene, I was just like, you are too talented to be here. <laughs> I've watched him change a lot. I've also watched him go through the whole process and kind of come to terms with this journey. He and I probably the most struggled with what does it mean to be an internet person when that's not what we set out to do. Eugene is a perfectionist, always has been. He has really big dreams, but he is incredibly capable of achieving them. In 2014, it was a lot more closed off. He was very siloed in what he wanted to do. He was very afraid of how people might misinterpret who he wanted to be or people writing him off as a YouTuber, especially because at that time, like content houses where people were just sort of shitty and that was like the content and that's what a lot of people thought YouTubers all were. He wanted to be able to make art. I think he thought the internet was not a place that could be. He actually helped prove that it was a place things like that could be. Like I think his work at BuzzFeed, Body Types Throughout History video, other amazing videos that maybe you don't even know that he made, opened the doors for a lot of other companies to emerge and create content like that. Projects that we've been talking about since the day I met him, to see him being able to actually realize them, I know how much it means to him. And it's just really special as a friend to, to get to watch your friend achieve dreams. The kind of media that he wants to make, especially giving representation to underserved voices, it requires a level of disruption that you need to infiltrate traditional spaces. Obviously a part of me that's like, oh man, I won't get to make as many videos with him anymore. But then the other part of me just knows how much this means to him and how excited he is. Three, two, one. You look like Cher and a horse. <laughs> You're literally Megan the Stallion. Team, you outdid yourself. This is magical. I want your drag queen name not to be Cheyenne Pepper, to be Gay Horse. <laughs> <laughs> this is hands down the best costume we've ever had in any video ever. Oh wow. shit. Stop looking at me like that. It's too hot. <laughs> I honestly think the greatest aspect of the past 10 years for me of being a digital persona has been the one-to-one -one I've had with audience members. There's no other space or place that I can imagine that I would have ever been more accessible and open to receive and give love on such a grand scale and in the public eye, it can be a very beautiful thing. Oh, can we take a selfie, gay horse? <laughs> it's been a week since the try on. We got our photos back. We're gonna finally take a look. Okay, so let's see how we look with a little bit of Red Bull with some wings. Three, two, one. It's black. Angels! Oh! Wait, wait, wait! Yeah! Ooh! Wow.
guys, look at us. This is a level of posing confidence that we did not possess when we began. Should they green light another Charlie's Angels with us? <laughs> I think the funny thing here was how different we wanted this to feel from the very first video. Gender exploration in the binary has changed a lot since 2014. Oh, oh. Keith. Oh. All right, well, this is clearly beautiful Keith and the rest. Oh. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Oh, really? Keith, Keith is the only angel I see here. Oh. I think the backlight on Eugene is so ethereal. It's very clear that I'm comfortable in these clothes. Yeah. And I think before I had to sort of lean into portraying someone who's very uncomfortable in things. Yeah. We're very comfortable and happy and finding beauty and power within ourselves and not present it for a laugh. It, it makes me feel good. And I just want to point out that there are especially queer people who do dress like this. They could be in the middle of Oklahoma dressing like this. They're essentially in danger. The only thing I want to say that for us contributing to this conversation now in 2024 is that if everyone can at least open up their mind and as these gentlemen have done, then you kind of have that smallest bit of uh, open discourse with someone who does that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Vagina? Vagina. Vagina. Okay. You know, look, you, you can't control your legacy online. Let's find the clitoris in three, two, one. Oh. Oh, yeah. Wow. This, look at me. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is very beautiful. This is right out of a magazine. It feels more elevated. It feels more fashion. Put this in a museum. Are you kidding me? This is stunning. Oh, wow. 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 wow, look at me. That's someone who's hung out with Eugene. Holy <laughs> shit. Dude, this is the cool, are you kidding me? Really I have struggled with posing my entire life. This is someone who has grown in 10 years. I never in my wildest dreams would have been able to take this kind of photo of myself. You should frame this one in your house. I will. Yeah. We've done many things, many things that I'm proud of, but if I go down in history as that vagina guy, pretty cool. <laughs> Dare I say it? Serving I'm next. Yes. I'm the fast food king. Now I was very stilted because the crown was kind of hard to balance, so I'll be interested to see how these look. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Howdy, little king. Oh, This geez. is my face when they tell me that they've stopped serving breakfast. <laughs> that was your character you got into. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. I heard you from across the studio just went, <laughs> We're still making memes even to the end. That feeling when you habbers no burger. Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy. That is a beautiful boy right there. We began making taste tests which are pretty simplistic formats. You've turned it into a platform where you can really flex all your skill. It's a place where you get to be yourself, connect to the audience. Eat the Menu has become this little stage for myself to do funny things and also create live products, both our live streams and now we're doing a live tour. We talk a lot about relatability and accessibility. The reason why these videos do well, besides Keith being the, the best face for it and the greatest voice in this space is because everyone has a relationship with fast food. It's the most accessible, most affordable meal you can get as an American. For you to be able to sort of like speak not only to the food, but to the people who eat it is really the reason why I think you're the people's prince. I, okay. This is the gay moment horse. I've been waiting for all my life. Everyone on three say gay horse. One, two, three. Gay, gay horse! horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this is an album cover. Oh, there she is. Look at her. Look at her. She's not shy and pepper no. anymore. I think my true drag persona is just Eugene. The makeup's makeuping. Wow. Oh my God. The hair is herring. The, the body is, is bodying. The light is lighting. The mm. hooves are hoofing. The hooves <laughs> are hoofing. Yeah, this is a great, and I'm be also being able to wear, you know, Mayhem's bodysuit and her heels on three gay horse. One, two, three. Gay, gay horse. horse. Yeah. Okay. Let's Hey, go. Girl. Wow. Girl. Wow. Are you kidding me? Girl. Wow. These are, we're getting these framed, right? Wow. Wanted to serve pinup vibes. Oh, you feel very like, uh, welcome to my dungeon. Yeah. Or welcome to my stables. Yeah. <laughs>
I think that the joy of the internet and the original purpose of the internet is to connect people. At the end of the day, the internet is about connection and community. And I think the good outweighs the bad. The Try Guys is the snowball that's created everything I love in my life. It allowed me to tour the world and meet fans and it allowed me to explore parts of myself to to gain a confidence that I didn't have before. It has been single-handedly the best thing that ever happened to me. I think people will remember it as part of their upbringing, part of their education about the world and the things they could do, and also hopefully the spirit of trying. I hope that the thing we're most known for hasn't happened yet, because that means I've got so much more cool stuff to do. And if anyone watching now looks back on it and says, wow, those guys did something that made me feel good that one time, that is the legacy I will try to hold dear, because it really is just about trying to make those moments happen for as many people as possible. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. happy boys! This is great. Can the editor please, um, with this photo, find a copyright-free version of the end of the America's Next Top Model music where they fade me into white, into the background so I disappear as if I've been eliminated. And then can you put produced by Ken Mock and Tyra Banks? That'll make me really happy if that's the last thing people see of us, the Try Guys. Yeah. Eliminated. And it would make me really happy if you guys could give Eugene a hug right now. No, I don't want to hug. We're not ending on a hug. We're ending on me fading. Non-consensual hug! <laughs> that's the moral. <laughs> and some things never really change. <laughs>